Eric Garcetti, the mayor of LA, he's 48 years old. The year he was born, 60,000 acres in California burned. The year he was elected mayor, it was 600,000. The year he was re-elected mayor, it was 1.2 million. And last year, 2018, it was 1.9 million. That trajectory is unbelievable. It's mind-blowing. I spent a lot of time earlier this year in California reporting on uh, the wildfires there. Every year, is, you know, there's, there's new images that are mind-blowing. The threat of wildfires in particular is so intimate, so immediate, so overwhelming. When you think that, you know, a fire can happen so quickly that an alarm will go off at midnight um, to tell you to evacuate when the fire hadn't even broken out two hours before when you went to go to sleep. This is a true climate terror. It is the kind of thing that you might ask a Hollywood filmmaker to dramatize if you were making a movie about climate change, and it is affecting the residents of California in real time. These fires are happening every year. They're bigger than ever before. They're doing more damage than ever before. They used to burn at 1,700 degrees. Now they burn at 2,100 degrees, which is hot enough to turn the silica in the soil into glass. They used to be powered by wind events that would last only a couple of days. Now they have to plan for wind events that last a week or more. They have whole new terms for the kind of fire weather that is produced by these fires because wildfires that are big enough produce their own weather systems. We now have what are called fire tornadoes, fire tsunamis. You know, you, you have wildfires that produce lightning strikes 20 miles away from the storm itself. This is unimaginable. And what I found so striking was that locals weren't adjusting those intuitions about the future very much at all. Everyone I spoke to in California said, oh, we've had fires before. This is part of the natural landscape here. And I would say, well, in LA, this last fire, the Woolsey fire in 2018, was twice as bad as any fire that had ever hit Los Angeles before. And they just shrugged and said, well, it's a little bit worse, sure. I met a woman in Malibu who's lived through nine fires. Nine fires and she was only considering leaving now because of some personal issues she was going through. It had nothing to do with the landscape seeming inhospitable to her. And I just thought, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I literally can't understand how anyone could continue to live in that landscape, having seen that kind of damage and that kind of terror so intensely and so regularly. And I, I almost can't imagine being in one of those homes, staring down that fire, but I certainly can't imagine having been through that, choosing to stay. She said to me, you guys had Sandy too, right? And I had to admit, she had a point. What worried me most about this was that I felt I was observing a kind of a case study in how we all collectively normalize suffering and that may even preempt our ability to take action to prevent future warming. If we get used to new climate scenarios so quickly that we can't even see them as threats, but simply see them as part of the historical normal, then we're gonna be considerably less motivated to really take action. And that's what worried me most about California. This is a state that I see as the sort of vanguard of climate experience. Already we're having these unprecedented wildfires. Scientists say they'll at least double and probably quadruple by mid-century. Many of the people I spoke to in Malibu, which was devastated by this Woolsey fire, were rebuilding their homes in precisely the same place that they were before. Unfortunately, even those people who did understand the connection didn't really understand the shape of the arc. That is to say, they knew that climate change was already making things worse, making these kinds of crazy fires more common, but they didn't understand just how dramatically different the world that we're all living in as a result of climate change was, and just how dramatically more wildfires they're likely to see themselves in the next decade or two. So we have all of these ideas about our abilities to address climate impacts, but the California wildfires teach us that the force of nature is really beyond any human force that we have. If you're really staring down a wildfire coming at you at 60 miles an hour, there's nothing you can do to stop it.